Uh, so, I mean, a really interesting session this evening that we've been given, or we've been given access to um, a, a set of glass slides and some old photos and so on. And that's what William's going to talk about. And William's already sort of rehearsed this once. Uh, and Gillian's heard this already. So Gillian's going to give marks out of ten for how accurately he did from last time. But you, I'm sure most of you know William. William, a uh, long front long time friend of the navigation, family association with navigation and so on. Technical guru, which is why it's all set up the way it is here. Um, and why we're able to do it online as well as in person and so on. Um, and is that a big enough build-up for you, William? Yes. <laughs> so, so over to William for about an hour's worth. If I'm doing this, it will be. I've just got a bit bored, you know. And uh, we're, 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 I'm sure that won't be the case. So, William, over okay. to you. Thank Apologies you. to the people on the And uh, thank you, Susan, for um, letting me know the sound has gone. It should be back now. Um, yes, Gillian, who's here? I think you were the main instigator for. For this, well, when you the, the, Ken Edwards, as well, the, um, who is our vice chair. So, uh, th so the, I've I've added a an extra slide or two to the presentation for people who are not familiar with the uh, with the Gallywood History Society. So this was um, what was uh, donated to the uh, the society as a sort of anonymous looking box of, of magic lantern slides um, and I think these were used uh, in the local Methodist church for entertaining the Sunday school children or, or some such and in addition to uh, pictures of the Chelmer there's some um, moral tales I think that they called that are in there um, so, so some traditional painted uh, lantern slides and and, um, and famous people uh, entreating uh, the audience to uh, uh, avoid the uh, the demon drink and, and other <laughs> other sins. So I'm I'm not going to go th through all of those, but that's a sort of flavour of the uh, the context of of how these came up. But then quite a large number of the slides were. Um, pictures of a, a canal. Um, now these these were two that had been um, put in there and uh, I, I started off the, the presentation with these two because the uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the one on the left is is uh, a Venetian gondola and, um, and the other one uh, looks very uh, Mediterranean and although the, the uh, the shape of the the bridge is is roughly equivalent to a, a John Rennie bridge. I think if, if I um, show two side by side, um, you can <coughs> you can plainly see that they're not to the same design. So I think and, and also that the the slides have been ordered um, in an interesting way, in 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 the way that they were numbered in the box that didn't really correspond to how the Chelmer and Blackwater's laid out, so I'm assuming that they were maybe used to, uh, to tell um, another moral story, but that one of the members of the church um, was uh, an early keen photographer. Um, they must have been very keen to be photographing on, on, on glass magic lantern slides, because that would really have been um, a considerable palaver, particularly compared to uh, modern digital photography. Um, so, uh, these are some of the uh, the characters who uh, who appear on the on the Magic Lanterns show, um, and these pictures look very much to me as if this was probably or, or a large number of the pictures were probably taken on an inspection of the line because this this looks like um, the sort of setup that they would have had so it's it's one of the uh, old um, timber cargo barges very similar to the the Susan but predating the Susan by several years um, they, there's a, a, a canvas um, cover to protect the uh, the gentleman on the uh, on the trip in the, in the event of uh, inclement weather, and you, you can tell that these um, 
these gentlemen aren't uh, aren't dressed for being a barge crew. They're uh, they're on a very um, genteel outing. Um, here's some more sort of group photographs. Um, I suspect that um, let me get a pointer up. Yeah, this chap here. I suspect is probably that was the then chairman of the navigation company um, and I'm going to say that that was uh, Francis Cramporn from the uh, the date that we think that the slides were probably shot in. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been able to identify too many of the, uh, the, the people depicted so I mean that, that's something that, um, that may be um, as as more people see the these slides, we can we can sort of well that us and the history society can build up more of a picture of, of who these people are. And I suspect this is Francis Cramporn again sitting in front of the uh, the the dinner table laid for the the uh, the directors of the company and their guests who are about to uh, inspect the line. So I I think these are probably from the. Um, 1930s, probably early to mid 1930s. Uh, I'll come on to the the reason why I think that a bit later on. Um, from one of the uh, one of the characters who I think we've identified in one of the pictures, because we've also got a photograph of him in uh, an early uh, one of our newsletters. Um, we we know his date of death fairly accurately, so we know that these <laughs> slides <laughs> must have been before then. Um, so this is this is actually one from uh, our own collection showing another um, trip on on the navigation. You can see that this one is is sort of more um, crowded and celebratory. So I don't think this one would have been a, an inspection of the line. This was, would have been a, a pure pleasure trip. But you can tell it's on a horse-drawn barge. We can see the uh, the, the tow rope coming here. 1899, yeah. And uh, this is a, <coughs> a more recent one which you probably have seen before if you've seen any of our exhibitions. Um, I believe this was an IWA uh, trip when um, they were uh, lobbying to, to get the navigation opened up for, for leisure use, which is so that probably dates this one to uh, the early 1970s. Um, and this is a black and white photograph that's yeah. been colourised with water colours. And that would be Bado Meads, that would be. I think that's Bado Meads. Yeah. Um, this one here is, is quite a celebrated picture of the famous uh, barge horse Chelmsford Duke, um, who, who on this occasion, another watercolour um, filled in uh, black and white photograph. This was on the occasion of a visit from an Anglia TV crew, which uh, um, in some versions of the photograph you can see standing on top of the timber here with their tripod and camera. Um, that, uh, for the purposes of this photograph, someone had decided that the, uh, the television crew was superfluous. <laughs> um, this is, this is a, a, a favourite. Um, old photo from our collection of the. Uh, this is a, a funeral barge uh, from Haybridge Basin heading up towards the, um, the cemetery at Haybridge, which has um, an entrance off the towpath specifically for um, for funerals like this. And it was traditional at the time that if a if a sailor died in the basin and was was buried in the local cemetery, that the, the funeral the uh, Party would uh, would proceed up the navigation on, on one I of the barges. Ah, Ned Woodcraft. Ned Woodcraft. Um, this is another uh, pleasure trip on the navigation. This was, I believe, to celebrate the centenary of the of the navigation, either the company being formed or the navigation opening. But, um, so that would have been about a hundred years before the bicentenary that we celebrated in uh, either <laughs> Take Your Pick, um, uh, 1997 or 1993. So um, the, the pleasure trips have, have 
been going on for a long time alongside uh, for, for most of the history of the navigation and the, uh, the commercial um, freight transport. Any thoughts where that one is, would you? Um, not particularly. Uh, How about goes to Stonham's? It could well be Stonham's. I mean, the, the um, well, the, the poplars that are in the background have probably um, grown up and died and been cut down or blown down by the wind. So, uh, yeah, Stonham's is, um, is certainly possible. Um, I guess it could potentially be rushes, but then there probably isn't anywhere where the artist could sit if it was if it was rushes. So yeah. Stonham's is probably a good. Rushes would be much much steeper than that. Wouldn't yeah, it? yeah. So this this one, um, it's it's a, a, a like with many of these glass slides, um, some of them haven't uh, come out as, as well as they might have done. But I, I like this one because it, it shows the, the detail of the, uh, the timber barge. Yeah. Um, it was captioned, I think, opening the lock gate. Um, although I'm, I'm pretty sure that the crewman standing on the bow there wasn't so much involved in opening the lock gate as maybe trying to fish something out of the lock that was getting in the way of the gate. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it's also notice, notable this design of uh, on, on, in the bow of the barge is, is very, very similar to um, the construction of Susan that we, we've got in other photos and, and at, um, at St. Ozith. So it, it sort of shows that in, in preserving Susan, we're preserving the, the traditional uh, means of construction of, of the boat. Um, as to which lot this is, ooh, um, I don't know. I mean, that, any thoughts, Neil? <laughs> it's, I reckon it's Stonham's. Stonham's. Yeah, it could could be Stonham's. Stonham's. It could be Stonham's. Yeah. Or possibly Barnes. There are quite a lot of oh, yeah. pictures that were taken around Barnes. And I suspect that the, the camera rig that the gentleman had at the time was probably quite time consuming to set up and faff with. So it, it does seem to have taken um, multiple photographs in one location. And, to look look like there are others. So this is um, this is the Susan uh, which I've included. This was a an IWA um, trip, but in in reference to the the previous photo, that was uh, Susan probably once again in the early 1970s running a, a pleasure trip. Um, so Susan, if if you don't know her, is a, a sort of hybrid. Um, so she has an engine, but she's also designed because she was the first boat on the navigation to be motorised. So she's also designed to uh, be um, towable with a horse, um, I think possibly because they, they didn't quite trust whether these newfangled engines were going to be reliable enough to, uh, to carry the transport. So here is um, another little montage of photos of Susan. Um, the, the one on the left probably in a Heyday cruising up uh, uh, Sanford Mill Cut with a, a, um, a, a party having a trip. And then um, here is the then uh, Mayor of Chelmsford who happens to be with us here. Hello, Duncan. Who's now also our, our representative on the, uh, on the Susan Trust, but here he, he was. Um, when uh, the Susan Trust was uh, inaugurated um, as Mayor of Chelmsford, handing over a, a grant um, check to uh, to start off her, her restoration um, to the Susan Trust, and then the the picture below is is one of our um, trips to uh, to assist with that restoration, one of our working parties in. Uh, in St. Ozith, which we, we've done, I think, three of so far, is it? Five. 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 Uh, and again, one of the people in that picture is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So going back onto the glass slides, I've, I've sort of rearranged um, the slides into what I think is their correct um, order travelling down the navigation. Um, so here's a couple which I think are Springfield Basin. It's difficult to tell because they are so dense and, and if, the, if it was the start of um, an inspection trip covering the whole of the navigation it's possible that, um, that it was uh, fairly early in the morning when it started off but I think those are two, two views of, of Springfield Basin. It's a pity we can't see more. This is the very earliest image that we have of Springfield Basin which is, is purported to be uh, circa 1900. Um, I realised when preparing the slideshow that every single one of the buildings in, in this view has now gone, although I think these ones here, um, I found a photo in uh, sort of the time stamp for 2014 where I think these ones were still standing. Um, but if you go there now and sort of take up the same view, you can see the, the developers have, um, have been quite busy and, um, and there's really nothing left of the uh, original buildings. Um, but the basin's still there. Um, I think, it, if anything, it's probably a, a better leisure amenity. Although, Roy, I, I can see you on the... Uh, Zoom will probably want me to point out that this, this shed is one of the uh, original um, Brown's timber yard sheds that's a, a listed building and therefore uh, preserved. He's just given me a thumbs up on the Zoom. Um, but all the rest of them have, uh, have now um, given way to uh, more modern developments uh, for better or for worse. So this um, this is probably our best uh, image showing what it used to be like with uh, with um, Brown's timber yard in in full uh, full use. You can see um, one of their barges here unloading, and these uh, two um, boat houses with um, their footing sort of out in the in the navigation. You can see this building here is the uh, listed shed that's been preserved and in fact if you go to the basin now and you see you can see some concrete footings from from one of these uh, boat houses that's still there even though the the building has gone so it, it, it's um, quite difficult to work out what they're for if you don't um, if you don't know um, and some other uh, pictures of, of Springfield Basin as, as was, um, with the timber barges un, unloading. This will, um, with the steel barge here, that this will be, um, uh, I think, post-war, where they were motorising the barges. So this is what they had with the steel barges after Susan, and, the, uh, and with an outboard motor on the back that was based on a Fordson tractor engine with a large propeller on it. Um, which was their, their sort of most successful um, motor barges that they had. <clears throat> and in fact, there's one example of, of the still left on the navigation, which is the, 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 uh, the Julie, which is used now as a work boat. And I think the dredger pontoon also still has a, one of these Harbour Master outboard motors on it. No, it doesn't. No, Roy's shaking his head. <laughs> they've, they've removed it. That's that's um, a shame, I think, in a way. But yeah, they're quite <clears throat> they're quite interesting to look at. I suppose Julie's the only one remaining. Is that correct, Roy? Yeah. Maybe maybe we should list Julie's engine as well. <laughs> so um, this is another one back onto the the glass slides and the. With the Magic Lantern show, this was um, shown at the end of the presentation as if this was the, the destination. But actually looking at the background, I think it looks more as if it's Springfield Basin rather than Haybridge Basin. I can't see any sea lock in the background and the surrounding buildings look more like um, 
what would have been at, at Springfield Basin. And although the, the character in the middle, I think we can identify as, as, as John Ellis. Um, <clears throat> and he uh, was the lock keeper at Haybridge Basin. Um, and we know that he, he drowned in the lock in 1942. Um, so we also know that the navigation was closed for the duration of the war. So the, this has probably got to be before 1939 because the, the, there wasn't any traffic on the navigation during the war years. And I suspect what's, <coughs> what's going on here is that they're holding the, um, the barge in close to, uh, to the quayside so that the gentleman for the uh, inspection can, uh, can embark and uh, um, probably waiting for the uh, photographer to finish taking his photograph and, uh, <coughs> and get on board so that they can cast off here. Um, so these are the other two pictures that we've got of, uh, of John Ellis. I think particularly this one, the, the way he's standing, the, the sort of, it's, it's um, fairly certain that they're the same person. And um, there was a, a obituary in the, the local papers, which I managed to uh, recover um, the text of, uh, which I'll read out if you'll forgive me. Um, John Jack Ellis, skipper of the White Fox. In 1942, Jack Ellis fell into the lock during the night and drowned. His wife came over and asked Dilbury Clark if he knew where he was, as he had been out most of the night. They found his torch by the, end of, by the edge of the lock in front of the house. At the ensuing inquest, when a verdict of accidental death was recorded, it was suggested by the canal foreman Bill Siggers that he had fallen into the lock chamber and sadly had been unable to escape. His body had not been discovered until the following day. Mr Ellis was a well-experienced waterman. Having been a seaman of some 30 years, he had travelled extensively during which time he had the misfortune to be shipwrecked and he was the skipper of a boat called the White Fox, which made an exped expedition to Spitsbergen under the command of Captain Barnes, the famous explorer. In addition to relatives and friends, his funeral at Haybridge Cemetery was attended by Mr. Francis Cramphorn, then chairman of the Chamber and Blackwater Navigation, together with fellow canal employees Bill Siggers, George King and Harry Gower. Brown and Sons was represented by Mr. Woodcraft. Uh, during his time as lockkeeper, Mr. Ellis had become a popular figure with both the villagers and the local yachtsmen. So, um, there we go, that was uh, from which I infer when the, uh, the, it was Francis Cramphorn who was the, uh, the chairman, and that this was, uh, uh, these pictures were probably pre war. So, um, this is uh, a, an image of a, an old map that we've got showing um, Springfield Basin at the, uh, I think this was 1897 or something, at some time around that time, um, showing Springfield Basin and uh, the surrounding area being considerably more rural than it is now. Um, I think I've I, I, I'll probably skip through some of these fairly quickly because I think most of the members of the trust here are probably fairly familiar with the uh, the history of the, the the navigation and the early surveys in 1765 and, and um, uh, 1677 when the, the cost of building navigation was estimated at £8,000 um, and the proposals were to uh, connect straight to the tidal estuary at at Beely, um, and the the I think I've, I've shown this before to uh, a, a trust talk, but the the sort of cost calculations of, of why you wanted to have a navigation <coughs> rather than continuing to use road transport that your your ton of coal required six horses to drag it up over a Danbury Hill and back down into Chelmsford again, um, but if you could transport it by water, your 10 tonnes of coal in a barge could be pulled by a single horse, um, so your 
tons of coal per horse had gone up from a sixth of a ton to uh, to ten tons, um, giving you a, a massive increase in productivity or reduction in in cost, depending on which way you wanted to look at it. So it <coughs> wasn't too surprising that there was. Uh, a lot of canal mania at the time and, and lots of people fighting to uh, invest their money in navigation companies. Um, and this was a, a, a calculation where I was trying to uh, see if it was possible to um, calculate the equivalent in, in modern money of what, what uh, it would cost if we, we were building the, the navigation now. and. Um, the conclusion really is that it's not possible to um, to make an equivalent calculation because labour costs have gone up um, so much, um, and the, the, it's it's very difficult to compare the costs. But the uh, the original cost of uh, of building the Chelmer in Blackwater was was twenty thousand pounds. If you were doing it now, well, that just accounting for inflation would probably be, well, probably one, one and a half million now, or if if we're taking the number of lots and the cost of building a lot nowadays being approximately two million, we've got 13 of them, that's 26 million, um, somewhere between those two figures. Um, this is uh, a drawing of the Black Boy Inn, which used to be in Chelmsford, was a, a major venue. This was where the meeting was held um, for the shareholders to form the navigation company. Um, nowadays the site is, is the Metro Bank and McDonald's on the junction of the High Street and, and Springfield Road. And now the only uh, remaining sign is, is this blue plaque to um, let you know where it was. I'm going to go back onto the, uh, the glass slides from the uh, History Society now. This is, well, up to a couple of years ago, a very familiar site of the uh, Chelmer Road Bridge in Chelmsford. The only difference here is that it looks absolutely brand spanking new. Uh, um, and there's uh, another uh, more distant view of it, you, you can see the, uh, the bridge over Springfield Lock in the background, absolutely brand new. That would be 1936, would it? I, that would perfectly plausible, yeah, sometime around that time must have been. Um, it was probably built as part of the public works programs to try and um, get out of the depression of the 1930s. Now this, we, we come further down, I believe this is Barnes Mill Lock. Um, I think the, the buildings in the, 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 in the distance, in the sort of straight ahead, I think must have uh, been demolished since that time. But if, if you look at the, the sort of shapes of the trees on, on the left, um, there's a number of pictures that were taken while in that location. I'm pretty sure this is Barnes Mill as well. It's difficult to tell with the trees in front. And it's the only photograph that I've seen showing the, the factory chimney at Barnes Mill. But there is um, there's a website called the Mills Archive, where there's actually a sketch of Barnes Mill which does actually show um, a tall factory chimney. Um, so that would lend some credence to this being Barnes Mill. And the sort of general shape of it and the, the mill pond that you can see in front does sort of add possible uh, credibility to that. If, if someone's got an alternative theory, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm definitely right. but. Well, let's hear it. Let's have a challenge. <laughs> um, this one is definitely Barnes Mill. Um, and uh, round about that time, I think the, this shed here was possibly a, a little cafe and it was sort of quite a popular area for people swimming in the navigation. I think at one stage they actually hired rowing boats out there and, and things like that.
Um, now this one, I'm in two minds whether it's uh, Stonham's lock or it could actually be Kooten lock, and I'm I'm tempted to plump for Kooten lock, and it would have been before the war, so it would have been before the pillbox was built. So if you um, if you sort of think of the the shape of the lock island and the general layout. Um, I think it, it's plausible that, that, that it's Cuton, but um, as I say, it could all, it could equally be Stonham's. We can't see quite enough on the uh, on the right of the picture to tell where the weir is, which would um, which would settle it. I go Cuton because I think it's a bigger drop of Cuton. Yeah, I I I I think Cuton. And it is the only picture I've ever seen of Kooten without the pillbox. And this is definitely Kooten yeah. because it's the only uh, <coughs> the only weir where there's the, the the step in the middle of it. And just for um, modern or more modern reference, here's uh, some canoeists with uh, Kooten in full flood, and with the uh, the pillbox on the uh, the Lock Island. So now, um, moving further down, um, if, if that last one wasn't Stonham's, then um, we, we don't have one of that lot. This one, I'm fairly sure, is Little Baddo. Um, although some of the buildings that we, we can see there are, are no longer present. Could be but, Sanford. Um, if it was Sanford, it would have had to have been when the during the period where the, the lock house had been demolished and not yet rebuilt and I'm not quite sure when the original one was demolished um, but I think this is another shot of the same lock and we can see the uh, the horse towing the barge there which is also interesting so you're saying I think it's Bado um, and this is, um, uh, this one's definitely Bado. If we compare that with, um, there's a, another one of, of Bado at a, at a similar time. I don't know. I mean, it, it, that's my, my best guess is that that's Bado. Um, but I don't know. For, further research and, and other people's local knowledge for me may prove me wrong. Surely, the, the building there is where the weir pool would be if that was back then. Or behind the weir pool. On the... Well, it looks too close to me. It looks like yeah. there's not enough room between the lock, you know, where we see the right hand side of the lock, and that building for there to be a weir pool in there. And also, yeah. the, the weirs would have been original, wouldn't they? The weirs that are now, now, there now would have been original. Yes, yes. And would have been part of the mill building. Which yeah. Means that, that's not in the right That's not, well, that's building. not, that's not the, that's not a mill building anyway. Um, no, but, but there would have been a mill there, which we would yeah. see right to the right, wouldn't we? Um, Come on, folks, I'm trying to stim that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still it's, uh, you are on about the road bridge with bathing written on it. Uh, oh, but well, 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 this is we don't say this is bad. Thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's, it, it can't it can't be Sanford because there's no there's no road bridge. Yeah. Is there? Oh, I see. Um, it's, it's got side panels on the lock with you, so it's probably a little bad. Yeah, I I I feel like it's bad, but um, yeah. yeah, more more research required, I think. But this is definitely bad, and we have a. A modern one of oh, Bado for comparison. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on down, I think this is um, Little Bado Church, looking over the uh, the water meadows. I don't think there's another similarly um, shaped church that, with uh, that view from the navigation. So this is just below Bado and above Paper Mill. And then um, this one could be 
in a number of locations really between um, Baddo and Ho Mill. Uh, there's a, a few places where the, the river bends round to the uh, the left with the towpath on the right, but only in, in that section of the, uh, the navigation. We were up there on Saturday, weren't we? And that, we were. That, that could well be where that the Springfield stream comes in. It, just, yeah. Just up, yeah. upstream of where the photo is taken on yeah. the right. It side. could. It, it could also um, equally be um, down below. Uh, Paper Mill, where there's a, a similar bend with, oh, with some wood. Elephant Corner. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how how we'd ever settle that. Nah. One. <laughs> um, mm, yeah. Yes, I like Elephant Corner even better because we've got that row of trees coming in, which might have been one of the original courses of the river across the water meadows just below yeah. Paper Mill. Yeah. So uh, yeah, some of them are quite quite intriguing. Where, where, but uh, yeah, it's probably some of them. It's it's, it's going to be um, guesswork, really. I think this is uh, very dense, but we can tell that it's it's paper mill from the uh, the bridge in the background. I think that's the only place where we've got that exact design of road bridge, um, and this was the. Uh, I think the picture that clinched it for me that there was a, 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 an inspection of the line going on because the, the gentlemen have clearly disembarked to uh, inspect a, a lock gate under construction. Um, this could be also paper mill because that was traditionally where the lock gates were made, although I, I, it's it's difficult to be certain from, from what's in the background from any other reason than there's a, a lock gate lying down on the uh, on the grass. Um, but we can see the barge uh, behind and the, the gentlemen have, have clearly got off to uh, to inspect the work. And um, these are some photographs from uh, a collection that we were um, donated by the uh, the estate of George King who, who worked on the navigation and these are, are lock gates clearly under construction, definitely at Paper Mill. And, uh, and there's one of the, the steel barges proceeding out of the, uh, out of the lock. Um, and uh, some uh, <coughs> carpentry going on with another gate. <coughs> this, is, this is clearly Paper Mill because we can see uh, the, the bothy here, which I, th I think Makes these ones definitely paper mill. Although the one from the the glass slides, it's it's more difficult to be certain of the location. And the George King you're talking about is that the George King who was at um, Little Badder and had the wood had the coal yard there. Uh, he was. King. I think he, he was a lengthman on the navigation. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was there was a king of Little Badder, wasn't there? Yeah. There was a king at the Sackford, so I used to call it King's Lock. No, King's, yeah. King's Mill Lock would be Little Baddow Lock. Yeah. But the locals say that called Brand Brandon's Bridge, Brandon's Bridge, because it was the Chelsea Rhine. So it was kind of that lock there, Sackford. They called it King's Lock. Oh, George right. King lived in that house by the, oh, by the lock. lock. I mean, it, may, it may have been. It was owned by the navigation company for a long time, so it might have. He might have been put up there as you know, sort of tight housing arrangement or something. Possibly. Yeah. Um, so th this is just a, a more contemporary one of uh, of paper mill. Although I think this was 2014 that I took that one, so it's probably already getting historic. Um, these are some more from uh, from. George King's um, photographs of, of uh, work taking place, uh, gates being replaced at, at Paper Mill Lock on one of the many occasions. <coughs> and this one I, I find quite fascinating because the, the, it shows the sort of technology. I think it was actually quite common in these days to uh, have these little uh, temporary sort of narrow gauge railway lines for moving uh, 
moving materials and equipment about on uh, on building sites, and, and we can see here that they'd um, they'd actually assembled that um, beside a lock to to help with the work that they were doing on the lock. Um, and this is uh, it, it looks quite a posed photograph, but showing a, an early um, the, the early technique they had for, for pile driving um, where we have this large heavy lump of wood which was um, called uh, the monkey on this uh, sort of gantry track thing with a pulley up off the top of the, the picture and then all these men would uh, would pull down on the ropes to uh, to lift this uh, large um, the, the monkey up to the, the top of the track and then let go and it would come thundering down under its own weight and, and knock the, uh, the pile a little bit further into the bank. Um, and that, that was uh, how they did it before modern hydraulic equipment came along and made it a bit easier. Um, this, uh, it's difficult to tell if this is one of, if this was the uh, the barge with the uh, the directors inspecting the line going under the bridge at Paper Mill, or if this was actually a cargo um, barge with sort of timber going under, because the, the picture's not very clear. Uh, there, there is a very similar, um, um, is it Fred Spaulding, the local photographer, took a, a, a very similar picture to, to that. Um, but that's uh, another one at, at um, Paper Mill. Now this one, although the, the slide's quite damaged, it, it's quite interesting showing um, the two um, barge horses um, in the same place. Um, I suspect this is probably outside Smuggler's Barn because the, the, the shape of the roof there looks about right for being Smuggler's Barn and it's also approximately the halfway point on the navigation. And, a, a, and that was a, a traditional place where they would um, they would change horses on the, uh, uh, or probably more to the point, they would change crews and horses on the barge. It's so the barge going up to Chelmsford would be taken the rest of the way by the crew from Chelmsford and, and the horse, and then the, the barge coming down to Haybridge would would continue on uh, with the crew who just brought the other barge up from Haybridge, so that both crews could make it home in the same day and I suspect that, that this is um, probably the sort of thing that's been captured in this in this photograph. Um, Alting Church, um, in fact the, the photographer had taken another picture of Alting Church which um, had been labelled hidden house in the woods and put in a completely different part of the slideshow so I think the, the, uh, the, the photographer was clearly um, quite economical with um, getting his camera set up and trying to take as many photographs in a location that he could use in different parts of whatever story he was uh, telling as possible but um, yeah if you know Alting Church you can see enough of it through the trees to know that it's uh, alting. And then likewise, this is a very familiar site, particularly when we've been on work parties down by uh, Sugar Bakers. Um, changed very little over the years. The only difference here is that once again, in this photograph, it does look pretty much absolutely brand spanking new. This is the pipe bridge. Um, looks very uh, very clean and fresh to me and then this one I'm going to say is uh, is Ricketts lock it there's I think two that it, it could be or I suppose it might potentially be Springfield lock but I don't think the horizons right for Springfield lock you see the, the hills rising behind it more um, and I don't think it's Sanford because there's no lock cottage there. So I believe this one is is Ricketts. Once again, we, we can see the uh, the barge horse 
pulling our, uh, our gentleman along. Is that not the, the old uh, A12 C bridge? It's a series of um, verticals. Oh, oh, you think that's the... Um, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think that yeah. could be Chalmers Viaduct and uh, yeah. it could, could be Sanford. Well, if it was Sanford, wouldn't we see a lock cottage unless... So, so not Sanford, it's Springfield. Springfield. It could be Springfield. I, I must admit, I, we're, we're looking at this, this section here. I assume that that was the piling, that there, there used to be wooden piling below um, Ricketts Lock, which you can still see. And I on the bank, yeah. on the bank, and I yeah. thought it looked like that, but um, yeah. Well, there, there we there we go. I mean, it's uh, it's um, it's open to interpretation, and, and probably requires more investigation to be uh, to be sure. Um, and uh, this one, it's I'm. I'm guessing that this one is also Ricketts lock on the on the principle that um, that once he got his camera out, he was trying to take a few photographs to make it worthwhile getting in and out out of the box. Um, and this is uh, a more recent picture of Ricketts lock with uh, um, one of the the last um, inspections of the line that, that took place in uh, in Victoria. And then back to the uh, the glass slides. I think this is probably below Ricketts Lock, although I suppose once again it could be Sandford. I don't think there's any others that it could be, unless maybe it was. When was the bridge built at Home Mill? That was probably already built by by then. Um, don't know. Um, I'd go with Ricketts. Yeah, that, that's what I'd, I'd plump for, but um, yeah, it, it's. Uh, and this, I think, I'm guessing, unless it's somewhere that's not on the Chelmer at all, I, I'm guessing this is probably an old um, intake for, uh, for the Langford treatment works. Um, there's, there's a couple of photos of this which look as if they were taken some time apart because it, it's um, the, the boarding up on the, the windows has changed although it looks like the same boat moored in front and the the, uh, the, the trees are in a different state of growth but that that building is no longer on the Chalmer um, so I suppose it's possible that this is a picture that he took somewhere else um, like with the ones from um, from Venice and, uh, and wherever the other one was from, um, so that that's uh, that, that wouldn't be at the back of Sanford Mill, would it, by any chance? The back of Sanford Mill. Yeah, because there's a little building around the back of Sanford Mill, about that sort of size. It's possible. It's You've possible. got the weir just yeah. on the right hand side. Yeah. Of it. Oh, the little, um, there's a sort of, the, where the valves are, near where they used to moor Susan up when she was on the river, that, that one. I'm thinking of, yeah, I'm thinking of yeah. the uh, Essex Farm School. I think you'd have to, uh, have to take a picture of, down, take the copy of the picture down and have a look, mm -hmm. I think. Um, or maybe there's someone around who, who remembers. Um, this this uh, little summer house has uh, I don't think survives to this day, but there are some houses lower down the navigation that have got nice gardens that go down to the uh, the river. So that's probably that bank doesn't look right for the navigation, really. You think not? No. Okay. Um, I think this probably is. The navigation it looks like the, the sort of the willows growing alongside and, um, and the fishing activity is, is clearly nothing new although you won't see the uh, the horse and cart gathering the uh, harvest in the, in the fields behind 
nowadays. So that's uh, that's one aspect that's certainly changed. That could be a little bad, wouldn't it? Um, it's it, yeah. I mean, it could be could be a, a number of locations. I think. Somewhere where the, the valley floor behind is, is good and flat for quite a long way. Um, and then uh, cycling down the towpath is also nothing new, clearly, from this, this picture. Um, so this isn't from the, uh, the Magic Lantern slides, but it's, it's quite a nice photo showing a, a, an empty barge returning to uh, to Haybridge. I think th this is the uh, the horse drawing it down there and the, the Bentles building is still very recognisable um, um, so view viewed from, from the bridge there. And now back on the, the glass slides our, our gentlemen are starting to arrive in Haybridge Basin and we're seeing the um, the gentlemen's yachts that have, uh, that have been um, moored um, there for some time and they're, they're clearly seagoing vessels or certainly this one here is because he, and the, the ones with the masks because they're not going to get under any of the bridges on the navigation but Haybridge Basin has, has been uh, <coughs> an area for people to moor their leisure boats and, and racing yachts for, for considerably longer than the rest of the navigation it was really open for, for leisure use. And then here's a, a more modern um, view of, of, if not exactly the same stretch, a similar stretch, but now the, uh, the boats are predominantly sort of made of, of plastic or maybe I should say GRP, um, but a, a, a similar view coming down towards Haybridge Basin. Now, um, and then similar one of the the, uh, the the yachts that there would have been at the time moored in the basin. It's it's quite striking how much more rural it was then than, than it is now. Um, this is one that I particularly like, in spite of the the, the damage to uh, to the slide that it, it's suffered. Um, because it shows very nicely the the um, Thames sailing barges here that they used to use Browns um, used to use for for storing timber and also for transporting transshipping the timber from um, the ships that sailed across from Scandinavia but couldn't actually get any further up the Blackwater Nosy Island. So the the um, the Thames sailing barges were. Um, suitably large vessels that could be used to offload a lot of timber on and bring into the basin and I think that's the, the best picture I've seen of them heavily stacked up with timber um, and that's that's the same I believe the view from the same point just by the uh, the lot looking across the basin um, and this is uh, a, a picture that we you probably have seen before of the uh, the Thames sailing barge being unloaded onto one of the, the lighters so that the, the timber could be transported up to uh, Chelmsford. This one's dated uh, approximately 1955. Um, and the, the Barosa has uh, since then had her mast put back on and, and she's um, now sailing again. Um, this is another uh, one that you may well have seen before of a, a, a stacky preparing to uh, leave um, leave Haybridge with a, a stack of um, hay or straw for the horses in London. Um, and they, on the Thames barge, uh, these these were designed to be sailed by. Uh, it was referred to as a, a man and a boy, although it's probably the. The man would probably have been in his fifties and the boy in his in his thirties. But the this was one of the occasions where you definitely need a crew of two because the the helmsman would stand here and you, the, the boy would have to keep a lookout on the top of the uh, 
the haystack to uh, shout back to the, the helmsman um, where uh, you know if, if there was anything they were about to uh, to hit on the course they were steering. When I said that and Grant Everest was in the audience, he said oh, you're totally wrong there. Oh, the, 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 the first, skipper would be the on the top. The skipper would be on the top, yeah. there, directing um, where it went. So yeah, oh, yes. Allow, yeah. the boy to do that. Yeah, I, I stand yeah. corrected. Well, no, I mean, it, it makes sense as soon as Grant <laughs> yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, the boy tried to obey his skipper's instructions. Yeah, and no, I was thinking that as I was saying it, but I started, so I finished. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and another um, historic view of, of Haybridge with, uh, we've got lighters full of coal here, so that would have um, dated this even earlier. A couple of, of Thames barges that have probably come in to uh, unload and we can still, you can, it's the row of cottages here is still recognisable in the lock keeper's cottage and navigation cottage. And um, then uh, the uh, aerial view of um, Haybridge Basin showing the, the sort of the various activities that, that would take place there. So we've got the uh, good selection of the dismasted Thames sailing barges stacked up with, with timber, a few moored um, yachts and, and motorboats. And, um, Oh yes, just down in the corner here, there's one of the uh, lighters um, waiting to take some timber up to Chelmsford. And then there's also here and out in the salt water here, there's these um, eel barges that they used to have because Haybridge Basin was uh, <coughs> um, where a lot of the eels were imported and kept before they were taken to London for the, the jelly eel trade. And Haybridge was particularly suitable because eels need access to both salt and fresh water. And so in these um, sort of floating eel cages, they could, uh, they could take them out into the estuary or bring them back into the, uh, into the basin and that, that kept, kept them healthy. And, uh, and another more contemporary shot of, uh, of um, the old ship and, and the lock at, at Haybridge Basin. So we're now down at the end of the canal and we're at the end of of my talk so any any questions on what we've seen that didn't come up before do you want to assume and tell us how you translate transfer the the images on the glass slides to your digital images that you've got that so that i think that had all that that had already been done by the history society but i think oh. from some of the Images. I think they were actually projected onto the wall through yeah. um, through uh, oh, magic the lantern. magic lantern and then um, and then photographed. Um, so it might be quite interesting to try and um, get them onto a transparency scanner at some point. You need to contact Mount um, Britain. Um, yeah. um, Anthony, we're working. Because that's that's probably will give a better quality of image and probably be less less damaging to the, uh, potentially damaging to the sides because you're not heating them up with, um, uh, by uh, you know, shining a bright light through them because they, they are, as we've seen, sort of quite, quite fragile. And so, some of them, um, I don't know, it, it may be worth, I mean, there's some images that were sort of too ripply even to sort of show here, but there, there may be people who understand how to uh, to restore them, um, but they, it's not something that you want to sort of uh, do by trial and error because they're very valuable images and you, there's no way if, if we damage. You to go to the ERO, very sure. Yeah, yeah. So they may, um, they may or may not know how to uh, look after them. So, Chatham's yeah. Bridge. Brilliant. Yes. Um, it, it doesn't look like one of the Rennie Bridge. Was it built later on? Why was it called Chapman's Bridge? Was it now that I was asked at the um, History Society, and I, I didn't know the answer then either. I assume there must have been a Mr. Chapman involved somewhere. But yeah. 
I didn't know if it was built to get to the farmland or something later on. No. Do you know Roy on Zoom? Sorry, I, 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 we, I think it's the same answer as William said, that it was a landowner at the time. But uh, I, I haven't got proof of that. Also, I was wondering about the barges. You say that they held 10 tonnes of timber. I thought yeah. it was more than that. I think with the steel motor barges, they could carry more than that. I think the horse-drawn barges, it was... Um, well, possibly 15 tonnes, but they, they were, um, I don't think they, they could carry as much as with just a horse pulling them as, as with the, uh, the, the steel barges with a, with a large tractor engine on the back. <coughs> so it was 10 tonnes? I, I believe it was 10 tonnes. I was told it was 50, which seems a little I don't know, it, it certainly wasn't 50. It was a certain um, and the six horses would they be used just to go over down the hill? Because usually a horse could draw, you know, on the level could you know, pull one ton in the car. I, 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 yeah, I think that. Well, I was I was told for Danbury Hill for to the get over there. The of horses that particularly, hill, yeah, there. particularly going. Uh, it was more troublesome actually going downhill than uh, yeah, going uphill yeah. because the, the you you needed to. to uh, Stop the cart from running away. Uh, well, we, we enjoyed your calculations there, William, but it also assumes that the, the journey would take the same time, whether it was six horses or one horse and one boat. It's yes, this is true. I just wonder whether it probably would take about the same time. I, I think something I, Matthew says it would be quicker with six horses. Pulling from Malden to Chelmsford, just over Danbury Hill, the one horse and all those locks. It probably also depends a lot on the conditions of the roads as well, because oh, really? you know, if, if 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 it's dry and the roads are nice and hard, <coughs> you you probably get along at quite a good clip. But if um, if it been raining a lot like today and the it was all deep mud, then it may take considerably longer by road than it would by water. Um, and the, uh, well, I think you have six horses pulling one ton all the way from Johnson. Uh, quite possibly. I can imagine this team of horses pulling it up the hill by the side. I'm with you, Chef. I think they swap over by that Indian restaurant. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I may. Um, no claims to it being more than, uh, illustrative. But, no, we, yeah. we enjoyed it. Really. Oh yeah. 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 I'm, I'm still. I still want to pursue this bit about Kings Mill Lock, though, because I'm sure it's the Little Bado Lock that gets also called. I Kings think. Mill I believe lock. so. Yeah. yeah. And and therefore, are we talking about different Kings family? But I'll, I'll send the source to Chas. I was reading it a while ago because so the, the lock keeper became quite rich as well by having a coal yard at um, Little Bado. Actually, I think I, I'm going to correct myself because I think um, I remember from a previous conversation. I think George King actually used to live in um, uh, Sanford Sanford Lock House, House yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. why the locals called it Kingy's Lock because it ah, was, okay, so uh, it's George possible King lived by that lock. It's possible like that both both bridge, stories are true. Bridge because they could shelter from the yeah. right number. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible both. Well, so, Kingies or and Kings may be a different... Yeah. Maybe we're talking about different, different, well, different, maybe the same family, but different well, they, branches or something. It's the same, same surname, certainly. So, yeah. Hmm, interesting. So, yeah. Well, any um, more questions? Well, yeah, I'm intrigued by the elephant corner bit. Yeah. Oh, we can tell you a story about elephant corner. I can tell you why I call it elephant corner. When I was trained on the skipping of the, of the trip over there, it's quite a sharp corner and I was told to hold the horn here for one elephant, two elephants, three elephants. So, um, <laughs> and I assume it's where the seat is on the bank. <coughs> and the, um, the little wide bridge, you know, the little foot bridge, yeah. we call that bridge 51 because it's built in 1951. Not 51 elephants. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is totally wrong of course. 
<laughs> I, I, I understand someone's been writing about elephant corn there, and actually it's a bastardisation of the, the use of the English language. Uh, and as William said, the canal was really famous for the eels, you know, and eels would escape, and even now, you know, we find elephants want to believe anyway, it's happened to get elephants, so. Um, and on a full moon, of course it's full moon, isn't it? Yeah. Ish. Um, a lot of eels would congregate in particular places along the navigation. I want you to believe this, by the way. And they became so famous, there would be these eel events, you see. And oh. you say, yes, thank you. And, and people would gather for these eel events. And in fact, they sing songs, we go to an eel event, we go to an eel event. And well, as it sort of echoed over the, the, over the valley in the mists that would be around at that time, people thought they were saying we're going to an elephant. So, <laughs> Eel Event Corner, which is the sharp corner there, just became known as Elephant Corner. <laughs> just a little bit of input there. Well, we hold it for three elephants and that's what we call it. <laughs> but other people say there's a slight bump as you go around the corner. And that's bumping on the root cage of the elephant. The elephant was there and died in the navigation. Because, and this is this is the next bit is true. The sea lion that escaped from the circus. No, this is absolutely true. It's in Coast Cutting and Duncan uh, Dudley wrote about it. Uh, a sea lion escaped from the circus at um, up in Charlesford here. Fans went to navigation and went down. That bit is true. The story goes that it was friendly with the elephant, so they pulled the elephant down. <laughs> So the elephant would entice the sea lion back out, but the elephant fell in the water, got its trunk stuck on this in the water, and died. And that's why as you go around the elephant corner, this sort of bump it through. So there we go. Several versions. Let's get back to William. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> I suppose, I mean, there's, um, if anyone's got any questions, but also if anyone has got anything else to, uh, to add to what we think we know about the slides and images. Oh, I mean, early on we had some in-play show there, didn't we, yeah. about the, the guy who was the, who was yeah. 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 yeah, and, and that, that helps understand how you know that. It's not a good crop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Have you got any other pictures of him to sort of make comparisons, for instance? Uh, only the same I've one, I think. One. Oh, you've got that picture? Got that one. Well, we've got it out of the paper. I don't oh, think we've okay. got an original. We could probably give you a, a, a much better definition version, couldn't we, really? There is a bigger picture of it as well. I think my son's got it in his loft. Oh, okay. I think. Mm. Where, where did we get that from? The last the one, the last one that was on. Oh, it was the last one that he was on. Yeah, he, that was his body was the last. <coughs> so we were told. So we were told. So we told yeah. mm. that, that picture, I think, is in one of the encyclopedias. I'm not I've sure got, which I've one. got the picture. Yeah, newspaper cutting with it in. Was it taken about 1890 or something like that? I don't know, I don't ask my sister. I'd have to look at the picture that I've got, because uh, it's, yeah. it's in an article on the, that I've got in the paper. I mean, the reason I mentioned it is we potentially supplied that picture in the first place. So yes. That, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm interested to know about it. Do we own this picture, William? Is this original to our archives? Yes. Or well, this—that's where. I mean, I don't know who who else has got copies of it. I don't. I mean, I don't think it's exclusively ours, but we've got a very large format print of it, which yeah. this is a photograph of. Do, do we know who it was? Do we know what? Sorry. Who it was? Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. But there was another person died in the lock, another lock keeper, wasn't there? Were there two lock keepers died in the lock? Perhaps Roy knows. Yes, we, we, we have had some fatalities at the lock, um, related, I think, to people coming out of the pub late at night. <laughs> and, uh, we, we've also had uh, one of our lock keepers previously uh, pulled out, one of the residents, uh, in the early hours of the morning. 
after hearing him, you know, shouting for help, and uh, he managed to get out and uh, over lockouts and pull him out. So, yeah, I think th this is the problem with perhaps close to water, not necessarily a good mix. <laughs> Um, but in the meantime, uh, can we thank William for a splendid yes.